Welcome back. It's still Plus Sports Special on Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can reach us on social media, on Instagram and on Twitter at Plus TV Africa. And our website is www.plustvafrica.com. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Plus TV Africa. We're still talking about sports in Nigeria and, of course, uh, how we can make things better with the um, activities being run by the LMC and, of course, uh, the NFA uh, in the NFF uh, in Nigerian football. Now, let's go straight to um, the issue of club change, name change, um, is this allowed in the Nigerian Professional Football League? How come, um, because from the rules guarding the, the league, it, it says that um, clubs can actually change names, but there's, there has to be um, um, a notification by the LMC but, and then from the club, because I do not think that this thing should be done when the league is already up and running. But of course, I've still got Steve and Adoni here to talk about that, these situations. Now, the case study of this discussion is Aquara United and Delta Force, the acquisition or exchange of playing slot. A lot of things have been said about the league, the club change and everything, and um, nothing has still been done about it. Let's look at Aquara United and Delta Force. Um, okay, uh, Quarry United mm. as at uh, about sometime last month, mm. they were a, a team playing in the second division of football in Nigeria. That's the Nigeria National, National League. League yeah. Now, Delta Force, also a club, but playing in the top tier division, that mm. is the Nigeria Professional Football League in Nigeria. Mm. Now, um, uh, sometime in November, Quarry United uh, came up and said they have acquired the slot of Delta Force. Mm. Delta Force FC in the Nigerian Professional Football League. Mm. Now, it will amaze you to know that as at uh, earlier this year, Delta Force FC acquired the slot of Kada City FC mm -hmm. playing in the NPFL. So earlier this year, Delta Force was playing in the Na Nigerian National League, that's the lower division. Mm -hmm. They acquired the slot of Kada City FC. Now, Kada City FC went back to the Nigerian National League and Delta Force was promoted because of the acquired the slot promoted yeah. to the to the M, to the MPFL. Now Quarry United the club in the NNL now came up earlier uh, sometime in November saying they have also acquired the slot of the Delta Force, Force Delta Force FC. Now if you look at it on the on the on the face on the face value if you just look at it on the face of it mm -hmm. first off that is that is that is totally in not that is that is not in line with the frame the framework rules. Now, if you look at Article Five or Article Six of the MPFL framework rules, mm. it, it gives provisions for how and when a club can be promoted mm. to the MPFL. Mm -hmm. So now, the structure of the uh, Nigerian Professional League is in in, in 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 a way that you play in the lower division when you when you succeed and when you are part of the f uh, top tier the top four teams mm -hmm. that can be promoted you get promoted to the to the MPFL. MPFL. now the acquisition of of delta force by Quarry united is like giving a back door for players who are in the Nigerian National League mm. to move up to the to the, the MPFL. MPFL. So technically, what you what we are saying is you don't necessarily have to compete. You don't necessarily have to win. Mm. If you have the money, you can just wake up, have negotiate with the club in the MPFL mm. and move up to the to, you know to the MPFL. Mm. Now, if you look at it now, that's taking it on the face value. Now, if later on they came up, they now came up to say that Quarry United has acquired the assets and the liabilities mm -hmm. of Delta Force FC. Now that's where the issue of mergers and acquisition come in. So there's, uh, based on our, Niger our, Nigerian, our Nigerian law, our corporate law, mm. there's a process that must be followed yeah. for, for any company to, to, to acquire the assets and liabilities of another company. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at Delta Force and Quarry United as companies. Mm. There's a process, there's a due process that we're supposed to take if a club, if a, if a company, excuse me, wants to acquire another company. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the process of the acquisition of Delta Force by Quarry United is, is totally, is, is, is against our a corporate law. Mm. But let's look at it, let's even look at it from the football angle now. Looking at it from the football angle because mm. the framework rule says every every club must be a corporate organization, yeah. must be a corporate entity. So looking at it from the from the uh, you know football angle of it, I, have we followed the due process? Mm -hmm. I made mention of the framework rules. Now the framework rules says um that if a club in the MPFL finds out or they, they get to a position where they cannot continue to you know to play in the MPFL they inform the LMC exactly. and then their slot becomes open. Mm -hmm. So now it is the duty of the LMC to now offer that slot 
to the, the four clubs that were relegated from the MPFL in the last season. Mm -hmm. So it's for those four clubs to come up and bid or to, you know, the, 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 the slot is actually offered to those clubs based on, you know, their, their levels, that is 17 to 20. Yeah. So now when those clubs are not now able to, you know, acquire the slot, then the slot now becomes open to any other NNL, uh, you know, team. team. Yes. So we're looking at it, looking at looking at the the progress, looking at the progress, looking at what happened. It's obvious. It is clear that this due process was not followed. Was not followed. Like I said in the former, uh, the, the the last time that that we that we're here, mm. the LMC they are acting like they do not have the power or they don't they are not in charge of the NPF. Okay, you have your framework rules, mm -hmm. but you are you are you are constantly circumventing your own rules mm. you cannot you, you what technically i'm even surprised that clubs that these other relegated clubs or clubs in the nll have not taken up an action mm. against you know the what happened between delta force and Quarry united. united now if you also look at the framework rules you'd see that uh, as at 2014 2015 mm. uh, 2015 2016 rather they said that um, the, the framework rule says that Clubs in the Nigerian Professional League should begin divestment of 50% of the ownership of the, you know of their equity mm -hmm. to private individuals. I can tell you, you know, on authority that there's no club in the English Premier League that is owned by the government, mm. and that's because they have seen the commercial value of, of this, the league. They've seen yeah. the commercial value of football. You cannot expect every governor or every government to have the same passion mm. towards football or towards sports mm. in a state. So, if a, a private individual or if a if a if a if an organization, a private organization, is involved in the ownership or the running the of a club, you'd see that things will begin to change. Mm. You see that you see that the the uh, they will begin commercialization of the the league. The league. So basically, for for the other force and Quarry United, mm. I'll tell you that that transaction that transaction is 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 is, is, is one that should not have even allowed to happen in the first in place. First place. Now yes. let's um take a cue from uh, what happened the what the framework actually says that uh, uh, they said no club shall be permitted to change its name. Um, that's the name under which the club competes in the MPFL or under which it gained promotion to the MPFL as recorded in the applicable LMC reg registration forms except with the prior written permission of the board. Any application for a change of name must be received by the LMC not less than six months before the end of a season in order for it to be considered by the board for adoption in the following playing season. And the board will use its absolute discretion in deciding whether to approve a change in a club's playing name. Now I'm particular about this other one that says any applic application for a change of name must be received by the LMC not less than six months before the end of a season in order for it to be considered by the board for adoption in the following playing season. Now, Quarry United play in two leagues, the NNL and the MPFL. Of course, they've given the notice to the LMC and uh, just recently the LMC came out to um, admit that yes, they've gotten, um, they received the um, letter the and they approved it. But do they even know that there'll be a, a, a crisis if Quarry United gets um, relegated to the NNL, and if the other Quarry United do not get promoted to the NPFL, do we not have two Quarry Uniteds playing in a, in a league in a season? I think that is basically what it means. Mm. Um, but I, I would like to draw a distinction between change of slots and change mm. in name. There are two different concepts. Mm -hmm. When you sell your slots, mm. quote unquote, to another team in the NPFL, um, what it simply connotes is that we are transferring your playing right mm. in the MPFL to, the to that, that other team. Mm. I think that was what happened between Quara United and, Delta, and Force. Delta Force. Now, when you change name, what it simply means is that, oh, probably for some, maybe you want to sound more fashionable, mm. you want to sound more trendy. So that is why many of them decide to change their name. And that's the one that really comes to mind in the case yeah, of Dakada FC, and Aqua Starlet, yeah, formerly yeah. Aqua Starlet. Now, they are, like I said, there are two different concepts. Mm -hmm. um, Doin has elaborately, elaborately uh, spoken on the regulatory gaps mm -hmm. in that transaction. Mm -hmm. Now, what many people don't know is that earlier this year, there was a law that came into, into effect in Nigeria, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act. Mm -hmm. That Federal Competition and Federal Consumer, uh, Consumer Protection Act is now the law that guides mergers and acquisitions of mm. corporate entities. Okay. Now, the starting point is that um, clubs in the NPFL are required to be 
corporate entities. Mm -hmm. I did quite some search on a number of the clubs in the MPFL, and I didn't see their names anywhere mm -hmm. on the CAC website. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that is a, a gap, something the LMC oh, can enlighten us on, because yeah. part of the requirements to play in the MPFL is that you must be a corporate entity, mm -hmm. you must be based in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you must furnish your particulars of directors, yes. the share capital of the company, the, they call it the form CO2. Mm -hmm. So you must furnish all those corporate documents to the LMC mm. before you are required to to play in the MPFL. Yeah. Now, what that simply means is that if Quara United is buying over the slots of Delta, Delta Force. Force, there should be some kind of transfer of shares. Mm. Now, it will be completely disingenuous to think that the LMC's approval is where it ends. Mm. We have a commission, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, mm. which regulates the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act, mm. just like we have the Corporate Affairs Commission. Yes. Now, that is the body that is saddled with the responsibility of regulating all these transactions. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for the LMC to wake up one morning and say, oh, we have approved the transfer of slots between Quara United and Delta Force so they can play in the MPFL. Mm. No, that is a breach of the law. So if you are saying that they are corporate entities, they must pass through that regulatory process. And that was why mm. what Doing was referring to when she yeah. said there's a process. Yeah. So that has not been done. And it makes us look completely stupid. Mm. Mm. Now, before, before we go on a break now, the, the question is, um, what is the risk that we face if this continues? And probably FIFA gets to find out exactly mm. what's going on with the MPFL the in risk, Nigeria. The risk is very simple. In, in the first place, um, you have uh, f five sections in the LMC rules, mm. you have section B deals with the commercial framework of the yes, league. Uh -huh. That commercial framework uh, imposes some obligations on the MPL, on the LMC. Mm. One part of which is to uh, look for title sponsors and commercial and broadcast sponsors. Which we do not have. Which we do not have. Mm. Whether they've been able to do that, that is a matter for another day. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that, would you really, um, attract investors when you have this yeah, right. ponderous system yes. mm. that allows people to take advantage of the gaps mm. in your own regulation. Mm. Now, the interesting thing is that there's actually a regulatory mechanism in the LMC mm. which allows them to check meet all these things. Mm -hmm. And the preamble, part of the preamble to the rules is that the LMC should not encourage corruption or sharp practices. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're allowing a relegated club to come in yes, to the MPFL through the back door. What are you doing? Yeah. You are enabling <laughs> corruption. Corruption, <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, lots of uh, sad things are going on with the Nigerian Professional Football League. Now, um, I also saw something on the framework rule says that uh, um, some of the banned substances coming to a football um, centre, um, they banned um, harmful objects like knives, sticks, that they banned alcoholic drinks and all that sale of um, alcoholic drinks in the, in the stadium where the football game is going on. But this is not the case. And uh, for me as a fan, and um, if I was um, the law, I would put a stop to the Nigerian Professional Football League because they are obviously not following what they themselves have put in their framework rules doing. As a last as a last season, uh, the final I think the final game of one of the clubs one of the, the clubs in the NPF. Yeah. There was a uh, there was an out, out there was, bus, yes, yes. That was, was um, canopy it was, it was it was it was terrible. Mm. It was terrible. In fact, the LMC came out to say they are banning the fans of that club mm -hmm. from you know from participating in the in the coming season. Mm -hmm. There was also a top player in that club that was also banned of you know for gross misconduct. For Rabbi Ali. Now, I'll tell you that some weeks to the commencement of this new mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. The uh, LMC came up and said that the fans and that particular player has they have been pardoned because they have shown remorse. remorse. <laughs> you have you have your rules. Mm -hmm. Your rules. So are you? I, I, the framework rules provides for disciplinary procedures mm -hmm. for things like this. Yeah. So are you? You 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 have your framework rules. You are now coming up to say you know the player has been pardoned. Mm. So basically, just like just like uh, Mr. Steve said. 
they are allowing they are allowing for uh, you know you know backdoor openings. Mm. They are allowing for people to be able to leverage on for other clubs to be able to lever leverage on on things you mm. know on, uh, going through the backdoor. That's why I would say that the, this this Quara and Delta Force issue. Mm. I believe that the reason why no other club has come up to 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 try to talk about it to yeah. talk about it is because they would also want to be up to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to do that when the opportunity also arises for them. Yeah. Because like I said earlier this year, Delta Force did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now Quara United is coming up to do the same mm -hmm. thing. In fact, I was going through the league. I was looking at the um, um, MPFL. I was looking at the table, the yeah. MPFL table right now. It looks like Quarry United is part of the you know last four, four teams right now. Yes. Teams. And if you look at the NNL table, Quarry United is part of the the top four top four top four teams. teams. So what will happen when? Quarry United is relegated in the NPFL and let's say Quarry United is promoted mm. in the NNL. So just like you said, talking about the band stop substance mm. and talking about Quarry United, putting both of them together, you'd see that the NPF, the LMC, mm. they have their rules, but mm. it's so difficult for them to walk by the rules. Mm. You said you 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 you've laid it down, and you said first of all we have to look at the the notion behind banning those substances. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know knives, guns, and They're those other allowed, things. Yeah. Yeah, they are not allowed. But we know that I'm, I'm not I'm not necessarily supporting it. But they are they are for, for if you look at if you look at the EPL now, Budweiser is uh, the, the sponsor of the uh, the Premier League and also La Liga. Mm. So we you now say that Budweiser cannot sell their drink when mm. any EPL club is playing. Mm. You know, we you say that when any competition is going on in the EPL, we say that Budweiser cannot sell their. Mm. So we have to look at the idea, the reason why this is done. Why are we banning those subs? Those why are we banning? I'm, I'm just talking about alcohol, alcoholic drinks for yeah. now. But t taking it on the on the on the on the general, taking looking at it generally. Mm. The MPFL, the LMC, do not work with their their framework rules. Mm. The LMC do not work with their framework rules, and of course, uh, a lot of uh, things are going wrong with football in Nigeria. The LMC is called the League Management Company, but are they really managing the league exactly how it's supposed to run? And the MPFL is called the Nigeria Professional Football League. Is it really a professional football league that has been played in the country? These are many more we'll still be talking about right here on the show. Plus Sports Special on Plus TV Africa. Let's go on the break, and when we come back, we'll be having Innocent Adulubar joining us on the show. We'll be right back.